Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. We still have a couple people trickling in, but it is good for us to gather together, whether you're here with us in person today or joining us online. We're so glad that you can be with us. Um, we'll get to announcements here in a little bit, but I know that for those of you who weren't at Trivia Night, you're probably really wondering who made the best chili so that you can hire them to make chili for all of your upcoming events. And luckily, she's here today. Allison won our chili competition. Do you have the trophy? And she won this trophy of the golden chili bowl. So she gets to keep this bowl for the next year, and then she'll bring it back, and you can compete with her for it next year at Trivia Night. So, yes. So we had a great time last night. Uh, let's start with any birthdays or anniversaries. Do we have any in this group today? No, no. Okay. Um, and we'll take some prayer requests. And I'll start with Sandy and George with their uh, prayer request of Thanksgiving today. They have a new, their first great-grandson has arrived. His name is Christian, and him and mom are doing great. Wonderful. So congratulations to you two on your first great-grandchild. So fantastic. Do you, uh, um, how is Cameron doing? Wonderful. We prayed for Cameron last week. He had bumped his head, but he's doing better. And how's his dad doing? Better. Good. Oh, just good news all around. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, despite the fact that you guys didn't win trivia last night, still a lot to celebrate. What else uh, should we pray for today? Ken. Oh. John. We'll pray for uh, John's family who passed away. He passed away suddenly. Pray for everyone who's grieving that death. All right. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's a lot of grief. So we'll pray for the Spears family who's grieving the death of their father, grandfather, beloved family member. Okay. What else shall we pray for this morning? Yes. It was challenging. Okay, so we um, have been praying for Mark, who has who has been diagnosed with leukemia. He had his first week of chemo, and it was it was how the first week of chemo goes. So we'll keep praying for him in the midst of his treatment and for his spirit in the midst of that. What else shall we pray for? All right. Um, oh, did someone? We'll pray for Linda uh, Zambrano. Had her second surgery it was it, it was successful and she's doing well but it wasn't quite as smooth as the first one so the recovery has been a little bit harder so we'll pray for her she's resting at home probably watching online and so we're going to pray for her we're going to pray for everywhere that's at war that they would follow the ways of peace instead of war um we're going to pray. My sister came off the Appalachian Trail yesterday, so she did not hike the whole thing, but she is home, and she's safe and healthy, and it means you all get to see her a lot more this summer. So all around, good news. Um, and then uh, prayer of Thanksgiving. Olivia and Danielle is, are back from Japan, and we're eager to hear more about their trip as they continue to process that. So thankful that you're back safe and excited to hear more. Um, anything else? Okay, with that, we will prepare our hearts and our minds with our musical offering this morning.
Please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. I'll read the words in yellow, and you respond with the words in the white. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and what we have done and by what we have left undone not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves for the sake of your son jesus christ mercy on us give us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in singing. Please join me in saying the prayer of the day. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. 
Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite children to come up for the children's message. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, Rudy, how you doing? He's two? I thought he was 10. No, he's two. All right, good morning. Okay, Parker's 10. We're getting all the ages today. I love it. So this morning, I want to talk about, you know how sometimes we use those big words in church, but we don't explain what they mean? Yeah, we have a bad habit of that, especially with kids. Do you guys know what this is? Does anyone know what you would call this? A plate thingy where you put money in it. Yes. So now it's the adult's turn. When we pass this around, what do we call that time in worship? Offering. And then if you're going to put something in this plate, and we were going to use a really church word for that, we would say it was your tithe. Have you heard that word before? Tithe. It means to give something to God that you have. But we use these words that they don't mean much to us outside of church, right? So we pass this plate around. Now, you, you nailed it. You said we put money in here, right? Yeah. And what do we use that money for? Do you know? For stuff? What kind of stuff? Do you think we use it to buy popsicles? Sometimes we do. Sometimes, if we're having a field day, we might use money that people put in here so that we can celebrate things like field day and having popsicles. How about you folks? Do you know what we use this money that goes in this offering plate for? For butterflies? I don't think we've done that yet, but I don't hate that idea. Maybe someday. What do we use this money for? For mission. What does mission mean? It means what we do in the world to tell the world about God. What could we put in here besides money? Can you think of anything we could put in here besides money? Because when we think about this as an offering plate, we're going to offer this to God. Is there anything that God might want from us besides money? Time. It's a little hard to put in there, but it's true. Talents, again, hard to put in a plate, but something else we can offer God. Commitment of service, put it in here, offer it to God. What you all are going to learn about in Sunday school today is that we're never too young to offer things to God and that you have something that you can offer too. So you're going to be learning about that in Sunday school today, and then all these folks are going to ask you about it after church today, what you learned. So I'll send you off to Sunday school, and we'll see you back here in a little bit. And we'll continue with our readings. Our psalm today is Psalm 23. I will read the yellow text and you may respond with the white. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, he leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Our next scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How God's love abides in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help. Little children, 
Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will assure, reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what, he, what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we will know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Rise as you are able for our gospel acclamation. Our Holy Gospel comes from the book of John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because, he, because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. For some of you, I'm going to ask a question that you might still get asked a lot, and for others, you may not have been asked this question in a long time. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Some of you are getting asked that a lot, especially right now, right? As you get ready for college, and for those of you who are in high school, you might get asked, what do you want to be when you grow up a lot? What are you going to major in? And for some of you, you may have not been asked this for a long time. So does anyone have something they'd like to share for what they want to be when they grow up? Anyone? Millie? What do you want to be when you grow up? She wants to be a mother. You did it. <laughs> Wonderful. What else do people want to be when they grow up? Happy. happy. Oh, that's nice. No one said that at the first service. I'm sure they, were, they, they might have thought it, but I liked that. Anything else? This question gets a little bit easier. What did you used to say you wanted to be when you grew up? When you were a kid, what did you say you wanted to be when you grew up? Teacher? A unicorn. I love when we dream big. What else? What did you want to be when you grew up? A newspaper reporter. I love that. Yes. A photographer. Great. Anything else that someone wants to share? A zookeeper. Yes. I always thought it'd be fun to work at a zoo, but more on like the educational side and less of the like cleaning up after animal side, if anyone can relate. So uh, when I grew up, I used to beg my parents to let us move to the farm. 
my dad grew up on a farm in eastern Montana, and I desperately wanted to move to the farm. My parents did not want to do that. They were happy in town. But there was one season in particular that I loved to be at the farm at. When do you think the most fun time to be at a farm is? Spring. Why? Babies. So in order to appease me, every year in the spring, my dad would take me to the farm for one week, just me and him. We'd go back to the family farm for lambing season. And for one week a year, I got to be a shepherd. And as you can tell, I was very good at it. I loved going out and finding the baby lambs, and then sometimes I would get to help feed them. And in the middle of the night, I got to take this red wagon with the sides built up, and I'd go out to the field and look for any new lambs and put them in that wagon and bring them back in. And the mama sheep would follow me, and we'd put them in the barn. And I loved that week every year that I got to be a shepherd. I loved it. Now, a little bit more as a grown-up, um, I realized that they really were just letting me do the fun part of that job. <laughs> uh, and that being a shepherd is much more involved than just getting to bottle feed baby lambs and pose for pictures and jackets from the 80s. Um, <laughs> but I, I truly loved getting to care for those little lambs. And so as I was reading the text for this week and reading about Jesus being the good shepherd and thinking on last week's texts, I kept thinking back to this time of my life where I got a little taste of that. Now, we have a really interesting morning this morning because usually we don't read these two scriptures that we had last week and this week like back to back like this. Normally they end up at different times. Because what happened in last week's scripture? Jesus tells Peter to do what? Feed my sheep. And he did it in three different ways. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs, care for my sheep. So he says it three times. Um, and now we have Jesus talking about being the good shepherd. So we have these two stories back to back of sheep and caring for a flock. But this really big event happened in between John 10, where we are today, and John 21, where Jesus tells Peter to feed a sheep. And that was Jesus' death and resurrection. So we're, I want you to keep that in mind as we talk about these two texts, is that we have Jesus talking about being the good shepherd, and then something changes, and now we're invited into being shepherds. So keep that in mind as we go through this a little bit. Um, as always, we need to know a little bit more about what's happening in the scripture before we can really dig into it. And so in John 10, something happens right before it and right after it that tells us about where Jesus is at in regards to the religious leaders. And that thing that happens is that right before this text, the religious leaders try to stone Jesus. And soon after this text, the religious leaders try to stone Jesus. That's the level of danger that Jesus is in right now. Kind of everything he's doing is leading to him being in danger. And uh, in John 9, Jesus does a healing that will in particularly make the religious leaders mad. In John 9, Jesus comes across a man who has been blind since birth. Jesus spits in the dirt. He puts the mud on the man's eyes. The man goes and washes in a specific place and then can see again. And all of this seems like a really good thing for this man who couldn't see. But the religious leaders say that Jesus made one mistake on this. Does anyone know what mistake Jesus made in this healing? It was on the Sabbath. And so uh, the religious leaders are saying, we don't do that. That's God's day. So for Jesus to do this, for them was a big mistake. But for him, he was doing what God does. So this is what leads to the whole conversation about, I am the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd, and I'm going to care for my sheep. And I'm going to do that on Sundays. <laughs> I'm going to do it on the Sabbath. I'm going to do it when it needs to be done. 
and I'm not going to abandon my sheep. So I want us to now think about Peter being told to care for the sheep. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs, care for my sheep. That's what Peter's given as a disciple of Christ. And it's also what you are given as a disciple of Christ in our mission in the world. It's to care for one another as well as everyone that God loves. It's a big task. We can't just leave it up to the pastors because it's much too big for us to do and because Jesus gave it to the disciples as their job. So as we think about caring for sheep, caring for one another, um, what changes because of what God does on the cross is that before a wolf coming to kill and destroy would be the end of the story. That would be it. It was the worst thing that could happen. Death was the worst thing. But then Jesus comes and he shows that he is stronger than death, stronger than evil, stronger than anything else, and that we, when we are caring for one another, are under that same protection that he has put in place through his resurrection from the cross. Which means we don't have to be scared like hired hands because we are part of the beloved doesn't mean we don't get scared though sometimes so as we think about the church our body of christ and we think about this on even a global perspective you may know a lot about what's happening in the church as far as our synod and church-wide and globally or you might not really know what we're doing globally as a church I know a little bit because I get the emails and I read them. So I know a little bit about what's going on, but you might not get the same level of emails that I do. But what do you think is threatening God's people today? If you had to name what wolf is threatening the flock today, what do you think that could be? We'll give you a minute to think about it. What is threatening God's flock today? Greed is a huge wolf threatening God's flock today. It makes us say, we need to keep everything in here. I need to take care of myself. I need to make sure that I have enough. I need to make sure I can trust what I have, not what God has. Huge wolf. Very scary wolf to go up against. Lots of dynamics. Drew, Elitism? Isolation? Oh, I really, isolation is a huge wolf in the church. It's huge because it can stand in between us and seeing the needs of other people. And if we don't think, if we have those times in our lives when we don't feel worthy of God's love, that wolf tells us, go home, stay there, stay away. Huge problem in the church. What else? What other wolves could be threatening the flock of God's sheep? What do you think? Self-interest? Did you say hatred? Yeah. And that one can get really scary because it's very dangerous. And when Jesus says to Peter, essentially, you are the hired hand who needs to care for these sheep better, he's saying you have to stand And you can't run away when greed and hatred and isolation come to just spread this all out. You have to stay and defend the sheep because I'm stronger than greed. God says I'm stronger than hatred. There are so many voices that are trying so hard to get our attention. And you know the voice of Jesus. You already know it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be other voices that come in and try to distract you from what God is doing in the world and what you are called to do in the world. 
this morning at the first service as we were talking about it, I couldn't help but notice that almost everything that people said in the midst of this conversation could be brought back to fear. How easy it is to be afraid and that 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 fear can just scatter even a strong flock. So what do we do to care for each other and for the world knowing that something like fear will make us run away from one another? And this is the, the question we need to answer today to figure out how do we feed, tend, and care for God's creation and the flock in the face of all of these things to be afraid of? How do we make sure we're not so afraid of how much money is in the bank account that we stop doing mission because we're looking at that? How do we make sure that we aren't afraid of what we don't know to the point that we stop going out into the community to serve people because we're afraid? One of the best answers to that is one of our very core values, which is community. Jesus uses the example of sheep because they like to stay together as a flock, and going out by yourself is not only scary, but it's dangerous. But don't confuse that with thinking that this gathered here together is the beginning and end of ministry. Our worship together is just a part of ministry, and you don't have to go out alone into a scary world of wolves, but you get to go with the rest of the flock. We get to remind each other that God, of where God's voice is in the midst of that. As we continue to listen for God's voice in our life, may we be brave. <laughs> Not afraid of wolves because they don't have as much power as the love of God has. May we be proactive in looking towards each other and then also out to see how to tend God's people and care for sheep. And may we find comfort like we do in Psalm 23 that God is caring for us and that even if we see people run away, that God does not. God's with us, is our shepherd, and then invites us into the amazing work of caring for one another. May we be inspired by what God has done and encouraged by what we see happening around the world in the name of the gospel. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our statement of faith. We believe that God cares for us with love like a shepherd cares for the sheep. We believe that Jesus laid down his life for us 
and also took it up again so that we will not be abandoned. As we listen for the voice of Jesus, we follow him as disciples, share the love of God with the world. We join together in our prayers, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Shepherding God, you gather your church whenever we wander from you and from one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace. Nurturing God, preserve the health of ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of all people. Help all of those with power to share it and to use such power for good, and lead all places that are at war into a place of peace. God of grace. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. We especially lift up to you today all of the families that are grieving for the family of John and the Spears family. And we ask for your protection on Mark as he continues chemo and for Linda as she recovers from surgery. God of grace. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your call, for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us more deeply to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace. We lift up to you the prayers of our congregation that you would be with Jocelyn as she comes off of the trail, that you, we give you thanks for the safe arrival back home of Danielle and Olivia and all that they have learned while abroad. We give you thanks for the faithful witness of Sandy and George as they welcome their first great-grandchild. And we lift up to you this new life, Christian and his parents, as they settle into a new life together. Be with all who we pray for, God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
despise as you are able. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God, who shepherds us through love and invites us to do the same. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he'd given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gather together as disciples, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Everyone is invited to come forward and receive communion as they wish. We don't have ushers, and so when you feel ready, you can approach and join in all around the altar, standing or kneeling, whatever feels most comfortable for you. We have a bread that has gluten in it, as well as a gluten-free option. Just let me know if you need that when you come up. The outside layer is a lighter liquid. That's grape juice. The inside is dark red, and that is wine. Everyone is invited. Please come.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you today and every day. Amen. I have just a couple of announcements for us today. Um, chilly night and trivia went great last night. Raise your hand if you're on the winning team. Raise your hand if you're on the losing teams. It's the rest of us. Uh, we had a great time. It was really fun. Thank you to everyone who brought chili and came to participate. Um, if you hear us talking about Douglas a lot, that really means you need to come next year. And then we'll let you in on the inside joke. Uh, we sent out an outreach survey, so that was on the weekly, and if you have not seen that yet, you can talk to Nathan to make sure you see it. It has three choices for an international ministry that will replace Pine Lake Academy. So Pine Lake Academy went through some leadership changes, and so because of their structural changes, we're just changing uh, some of our support that way as well. So we will be choosing one of three options, so please look for that email and vote. Each of them has a definition and information about what they are. So thank you to Linda for putting together, Linda Zambrano for putting together all of that information. And I encourage you to do your own research on it. And then put your vote in. Um, our VBS registration is closed. We, uh, it went so fast. We have 77 kids signed up. Uh, so... Uh, registration is closed. The good news is the volunteer registration is not closed. So you can still sign up to volunteer. You can find more information about that out in the Narthex, or you can talk to Katie about it. And if you're not sure where your gifts could be best used, she'll find you a spot. So you can talk to her, and she can help you uh, uh, get signed up for VBS. Today is our first day of adult education. That'll happen right after we have enough time to grab coffee and treats back here, and then we'll head back over to the multi-purpose room, and we'll be uh, learning about learning today. So we'll learn about discipleship and why that's so important to our lives of faith. Um, all right, May 4th is Meats and Sweets. So we'll be grilling some meat and having some sweets, and if that's not good enough, we're bringing in someone to talk about the benefits of community gardens and also having Q&A time. So if there's something at home that you can't get to grow or you can't stop from growing, this is a great time to bring your questions and ask someone who really knows about gardening. Am I missing anything? All right. Please rise as you are able for the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you and now and always. Amen.
Alleluia. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.